Hi, my name is Art Adams. I am the product specialist for cinema lenses for Area Americas. I am based out of Burbank, California. And uh, even though I'm the specialist for lenses, I did a lot of work uh, field testing the Alexa 35, so I know a fair amount about the inside of the camera. Uh, and I'm really uh, very happy with what we've done. This is our first major new sensor in 12 years. Uh, previously, our sensor design and our color science was the gold standard for the film industry. And with this new sensor, we wanted to try something new, so what we did was we rewrote all the color code and we used a new model that's not used in any other camera at this time. And we can map colors much more accurately, uh, and most importantly, we can map them in a perceptually accurate way. And the result is that I've been able to, say, aim this camera at some really intricately colored objects and put a, an HDR monitor next to it and look from the monitor to the objects by eye and see the same colors. And this includes some really specific colors that are really difficult for cameras to reproduce. Reds and purples, uh, greens, blues. Uh, there are even some issues with our own color science where we had to sacrifice things a little bit to really nail the colors we wanted, like flesh tone. Our reds would go a little, our saturated reds would go a little bit of bluish. Our dark blues would clip in aces. And these were known issues, but to hit the colors we really wanted to hit, we had to compromise a little bit because we were using the same tools everyone else uses. Now, using our completely new set of tools, we can nail all of these colors and none of these issues exist anymore. So it's a really phenomenal little camera. Uh, it's 4.6K um, in a Super 35 sensor. 17 stops is dynamic range. Now, a lot of people ask why we don't have a dual gain uh, mode, but we do. And this is something we haven't talked about recently because we talked about it when the camera, you know, our initial cameras came out in 2010, but we need to remind people that we've been dual gain the entire time. We take two gain feeds off of every photo site. We have a high gain feed that pull, uh, pulls up the shadows and we have a low gain feed that pulls down the highlights and then we merge those in real time. So even though this is a 4.6K sensor, we're pulling 9.2K of data off the back of it all the time and then merging those images in real time. And that's really the only way you can get the kind of overexposure dynamic range that we have. We've always been the best in terms of that. Uh, we have 7.8 stops of overexposure latitude in all of our other cameras. This new camera has 9.3 stops of overexposure latitude. Now we think this is going to be really important when uh, HD becomes much more common because those, those highlights become really, really important. And, and carrying the kind of dynamic range that we do, we think we're able to capture footage that's going to be relevant for HDR in 10, 15, 20 years as we remaster content for whatever displays are coming. And we really don't know what is going to, be, is going to come. We just know that we are probably in a very good position that our footage will be ready for all of that. And then our lenses, since I'm the lens specialist, I should say a little bit about that. We wanted to make sure that we offered an optical um, solution that will get all of the color and contrast and dynamic range information that this sensor can handle to the sensor. And we actually designed these lenses to do that. They came out originally with the Alexa LF, but we knew this camera was coming and they were designed around the specs for this camera. So if you really want to deliver everything the sensor can handle, signature lenses are designed to do that. And that applies to both the primes and the zooms. They're very, very high performance lenses. But also, not everyone wants a really high performance lens. Some people want that, that vintage feel. And I love the vintage feel. I was a cinematographer for uh, 27 years and I used to shoot with a lot of vintage lenses just because I like the look. We now have the impression filters which are rear mounted attachments that mount uh, through a magnet uh, interface onto the back of the lens and we can introduce some very specific vintage lens effects. So spherical aberration, coma, a little bit of field curvature and we've got uh, two different types of filters with four different strengths and they really do a great job of introducing some very specific vintage lens effects. And what's nice about them, I talked to one DP who really likes this idea because he loves shooting with vintage lenses but he finds that about once a day he gets backed into a corner by a situation that a vintage lens can't handle. So say sunlight streaming in the window, bouncing off a table, lighting a room, really beautiful look, but the vintage lens is going to flare and the black levels are gonna come up and the image is gonna melt out. But with our filters, you can get a fair amount of that same look, but not have that kind of shift in contrast 
Uh, we don't introduce uh, more chromatic aberration, which is an issue with a lot of older lenses. And that looks really not so great in HDR because that comes alive and it looks like neon. So we're really trying to introduce vintage lens effects that will carry forward into the future. So uh, if you have any questions about the lenses or the cameras, feel free to re reach out to me. Uh, my email address is lenses at airy.com. Happy to answer any questions. And if I can't answer them, I'll find someone who can. Thanks very much.